the simplicity of the gospel. For those of you who are rating, let me give you this before I back up. Number one, it is a biblical experience. You might have gone to a, a, a church before that doesn't believe in Pentecostals, doesn't believe in the, they don't believe in the Pentecostal experience. That is why whenever you hear mighty miracles being done on the earth today, it's not done in one of those churches. It's not done in the Anglican church. It's not done in the Roman Catholic church. It's not done in those churches because they don't believe in the power that you need to perform these miracles. But not only is it a biblical experience, it is what we call a subsequent experience. By that I mean that it happens after you are saved. Some religions do not believe that, but there's ample evidence in the Bible that this being filled with the Holy Ghost is a second experience. We call it a subsequent experience. I'm going to explain that in a minute. Uh, number three, it is a normal experience. It is for everybody. I'm going to show some scriptures where you come across the word all. All comes up about seven times. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, and number four, which is most important for me, is that this is a powerful experience. It is a real powerful experience when you are filled with the Holy Ghost. And number five, it is a necessary experience. Let me go through those for those of you who are writing. Number one, it is a biblical experience. Number two, it is a subsequent experience. It is an experience that happens after you are saved. Number three, it is a normal experience. It's for everybody. Number four, it is a powerful experience. And number five, it's a necessary experience. Let's begin at number one. Let's begin at number one. It is a biblical experience. Look at John chapter, sorry, look at John in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. Let's show that this is biblical. This is not something that the Pentecostal churches decided we're going to do. John, sorry, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 11. John the Baptist is speaking and he says, I baptize you with water for repentance. So that's the first experience. You repent and got saved. How many could say amen to that? But he goes on, but after me, after I baptize you because you're saved, you know, baptize people that are not saved. After I baptize you, there comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not even fit to carry. Listen to this. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The Holy Ghost came on, the fire came on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Ghost is still available to all of us because the book, of, the book says, the word of God says in Luke chapter 11 and verse 12 or 12, 11, I'm sure. I'm not sure. But it says that God will give the Holy Ghost to them who ask. So if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, it's perhaps because you're not asking. If you then be evil and you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? You see, that is why we got to revert to things of the world. That's why we got to get all these fancy lights and the smoke machine to get people to come to church. You know, and that, that, that's why people keep walking in the flesh and the church is not advancing like it should. Their lives are not exp advancing like it should because we know nothing about living in the spirit. I've been teaching you for the last three sessions about life in the spirit. Even in the church, from the pulpit to the door, there's too much life in the flesh. But let me show you another scripture about Jesus now. That was about John the Baptist. I'm showing you that it is a biblical experience. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. The Lord Jesus said, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water. That is the first. He baptized them because they were saved. But in a few days, you should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's the second experience. The first one when they got saved, they were baptized with water. So this is a biblical experience. But let me give you the third one. Huh? Look at the disciples on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. They're disciples. They're saved. 
they are born again. They have the Christian experience, but they were not filled with the Holy Ghost. To be filled with the Holy Ghost is a biblical experience. And brother, as we come near the end of time, you're going to discover that you can't just walk into the strong man's house. Who's the strong man, by the way? Satan. You're not going to walk into the strong man's house and spoil his house. You're not going to rob the spoiled man if you are like, like the sons of Sceva. The sons of Sceva went to a man that was demon possessed. And said, I command you, talking to demons, in the name of Jesus that Paul is preaching about. And the, 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 the demon possessed man looked at them and said, Paul I know. Jesus I know. But who are you? They were not filled with the power. And that man leapt on them, ripped off their clothes, beat them up, and sent them down the road naked as the second streakers recorded in the Bible. That's why people in the church are able to be demon possessed and still be the major praise and worship leader. There's no spirit revealing things like the gifts of the spirit should. No word of wisdom, no word of knowledge, and most churches operate like a circus. Joshua 24, 15, I think, said, every man did that which is right in his own sight. It is time for us to see the move of the spirit in the church. And we don't need a smoke machine. We don't even need, I'm saying this tongue in cheek. We don't need the tech men. Huh? Paul and the tech men. We don't need the tech men. Understand what I'm saying? I put need in inverted commas. We need God to turn up on the scene. We need God to come into services like these and turn everything upside down. And when we are filled with the Holy Ghost, look, they're trying to, meet, to reach herd immunity in Barbados. They want to get about 80% of the population uh, vaccinated. If we could get only 20% of the church members filled with the Holy Ghost, we'll turn this world upside down. I can guarantee you now that we have about 40 persons in the church. And if I ask for a show of hand that there are not 10 people right here now, you could tell me you are filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. That's why the church is reverting to things of the world. That's why we're reverting. We got to get psychologists to come in. Nothing wrong with them. We got to get psychiatrists to come in. Nothing wrong with them. But you, if you get people that are filled with the Holy Ghost... You lay hands on that person who's having mental disorders. And in the name of Jesus, you command those demons to come out. You will see what will happen. The world will be turned upside down. But we ain't got no Holy Ghost. If you ain't got no Holy Ghost, you got to talk. Somebody said so in the university. In the Bible school. You either have to have the power of the Holy Ghost or gift of God. I prefer the power of the Holy Ghost and not the gift of God. And I'm disappointed that too many spiritual leaders these days are taking people in a direction away from the Holy Ghost. Acts 2, 1 to 4, it says um, that they were filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. They were saved. So you see, that's a biblical experience. Listen, and let me show you that to be filled with the Holy Ghost is a biblical command. It is not optional. You take out your immune system, you can't live. It's, option, it's not optional. Listen to this. A promise and a command. Jesus said, this is the promise. I'm going to send you what my father has promised. We read that earlier. Then there's a command in Luke 24, 49. And if you do this today, nobody in the church will work. Before the disciples laid hands on anybody, before they went out and messed up the gospel, because they didn't know what to say, before they go out there and give false prophecies, the Lord said, you sit down right there. You don't leave home until you are filled with the Holy Ghost. We got people prophesying today who are not filled with the Holy Ghost. That impossible. Not filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Where do you get the words from? And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, Jesus said. But wait in the city of Jerusalem. Until you are endued with power from on high. The church is impotent today. No power. Because people are being led into the worldly ways of doing things. And every time we get a chance we are comparing ourselves with what the world does. 
I thought we were supposed to be unique. I thought we were a peculiar people. I thought people were supposed to look at us and see us as square pegs and wrong holes. I thought that people were supposed to look at us and say we are different. That's what happened to Israel. Israel existed with all sorts of nations around them, but they were different. God gave them instructions, laws, commandments, and you could look and see that they were different. In times past, even although this was wrong, we could still tell a, a, a Christian woman by the length of she dressed. At least. I mean, that was the wrong way. Okay. But today, when you look at pastors in the public with their distressed jeans, well, if, if it doesn't make any difference whether you wear distressed jeans or not, if it doesn't make any difference where you don't wear a suit then, you go into parliament, you wear a suit. You go to a funeral, you wear a suit. Have you ever seen a person bury a dead a minister without a robe or a suit? Even to bury the dead, we have to have suits. But when we come to the house of God, oh God, God looks at, men look at the older, older parents. Now listen, don't trivialize the first part of that verse. Men look at the outward appearance. That's the part they're looking at it, so dress it properly. Men are looking at the outward appearance. Don't trivialize that and say, well, God looks at the heart, but men look at the outside. No, because men are looking at the outside. You should be careful how you come before God. You don't go before the prime minister in a certain way. But we come into the pulpit these days. No, no conviction of sin. No conviction of sin. There's no Holy Ghost to convict us. We come to church anyhow. But the Lord said to them, you aren't saying nothing in my name. Nothing. You aren't leading the praise of worship. You aren't teaching the Sunday school unless you are endued with power from on high. How do you know that you're endued with power from on high? You'll speak in tongues. Otherwise, Sam Pushy ended up because I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. How do we know that? Where did you speak in tongues? Listen. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 39, Peter declared that the experience is for all of God's people throughout the entire church age. The Bible hasn't changed. I'm the Lord, I change not. A hundred years ago, people were turning America and certain other places upside down. People like Billy Sunder. Huh? People in the like, um, what's the lady? I'm just trying to remember a, a lady who did some wonderful work. And not long ago, you have people like Catherine Kuhlman turning the place upside down. Man, man, had a tech man. They had the lights. They had the smoke machine. They didn't have any Zoom. But they had the Holy Ghost. On the day of Pentecost, Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none. But what I have give I thee. You notice they said that after the day of Pentecost. Because they were in the upper room. And they were filled with the power of God. Were that not so that man will probably be still there begging today. But the power, the service is for power. That's why we want the service. But let me move on quickly and tell you, not only is it a biblical experience, not only is it a biblical command, but it is a subsequent experience. It is something, I know there, there are major denominations, like the Seventh-day Adventists, for example, who would tell you that this is not so, it is not a subsequent ex experience. They don't even believe in the rapture. Okay? But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is something in addition to your new birth. Now, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, it does not mean you're not a Christian. It does not mean if you die, you wouldn't go to heaven. No, that, that, that's, what it, that's not what it means. But it means that you will be like one of those C-180 Mercedes Benz. I think the Mark C-180. You smell the leather. You look inside. Man, and... $500,000. And you don't even have to turn it on for it to go down the hill. So it goes down the hill. Doesn't take any effort. But when you get down there, you want to come back up. But when you look under the bonnet, it ain't going the engine. No power. So we could come to church, dress it all fine and dandy. We could come to church, look as holy as we like. Without power, we're like a Mercedes that went downhill. Because I ain't taking none to go downhill. But can't get back up because there's no engine under the hood. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is the engine under the hood. Children will be better. Thanks for your presentation, Sister Colleen. I listened to you. Sounded good. Huh? Children will be able to say, like Joshua, as for me and my house, 
we serve in God. Because they see the power in you. They see the power of the Holy Ghost in you. This is different from just living in the flesh. Too much of the church is living in the flesh. The simplicity of the gospel.